I know recently there's been like a few people that have committed suicide, celebrities that have done it, and so it gets national attention. And a lot of people, I think, can't really understand what, what it's like to feel so bad that you want to end your life. Like, that there's no, there's no better way out. You have no hope for the future that you just can't go on anymore. You're so miserable in your own head that you just have to turn it off. But I mean, honestly, I think I've felt that way a lot throughout my whole life. I mean, even when I was really young, I used to want to like, cut myself. And that was before I knew what emo was. I was too young, I didn't really know much. I went to a Christian school. And I didn't even really know what that was. But I used to be, I had so much self-hate and like so much anger at myself just for always feeling not good enough or unworthy. And I used to just wanna, I wanted to inflict physical harm on myself. And then later on I figured out that people actually do that, you know, the emo people and cutting and whatnot. But I used to wanna do that. And as I've gotten older, I've always still had a lot of like, real, real self-hate. Just afraid to say what I'm thinking in fear of being unloved or in fear of causing controversy or people thinking negatively about me. I've always really struggled with being not just happy, but like okay. Just being content in my own head, like always. And I mean, it's, it, it got worse. It got worse over time. I've had two open heart surgeries and I got a pacemaker. And just a couple years ago, I got an infection on my heart from a, a, an infection called endocarditis from not brushing my teeth for three days. Um, bacteria entered my bloodstream through my mouth and attacked my heart and a little tumor Basically a little tumor grew on my heart. And I spent two months on drip antibiotics, twice a day, three hours a day, uh, for them to try to, those antibiotics try to go into my bloodstream and, and go to my heart and attack that, that uh, little tumor-like growth on my heart. And during that time I couldn't do anything, I couldn't, I couldn't break a sweat, I couldn't work, I couldn't be around a large group of people. And I was really, really sick. And I hated myself so much. So much. Because I felt worthless. Like I just felt absolutely worthless. 24, 25, back living at home. Literally just sitting around all day, taking this, this, uh, it was like a, a tennis ball size of antibiotics that just slowly drained into my system. It was basically chemotherapy. It's a black box drug, drug that I was taking called Cipro. And it, I was just uh, probably at the lowest, lowest of lows that I've ever been in. And, you know, they gave me um, prescription medication. So they gave me, I think, Oxy and Percocet, two month supply. And I've had it before during my heart surgeries, but I was never that miserable then. You know, it sucked, but I wasn't, I didn't have that misery like I did with endocarditis. And I got hooked, you know, I took one. You know, I've, I've had that feeling, I've had morphine, I've had plenty of drugs in the hospital. And I always, I've always had that feeling where instantly you just feel okay, you feel better. And, you know, when I was stuck at home, I would take an Oxy 
and for four hours of the day, I just would feel okay. I, I didn't feel like I had this constant self-hate in my head, this constant battle of, I suck, I'm not good enough, um, what am I doing with my life? And I just got hooked to that feeling of not caring, just relaxed. And so I took it every day for several months, two months, I think, until it ran out. And I tried to stop like halfway through, but I couldn't. You know, every day I woke up, the first thing I would think about was, when should I take it today? When do I want to feel good today? You know? And basically that's, I would take it and then go to the coffee shop and just write and just get my feelings out of my head. Just get those thoughts out of my head that I couldn't do if I didn't take one. Cause I, I just couldn't do anything. I hated myself so much. I would just lay in, lay on the floor of my house and just cry every day. So yeah, I got hooked. And then after my supply ran out, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe all along, I've always felt, you know, I've always, I always, I've, I've always had self doubt, and maybe it's just something's wrong with my brain, you know. So it's like maybe I need uh, some antidepressants, you know. I needed, I needed that feeling back, and I thought maybe there's just something wrong with me, and the. You know, the opiates showed me, like, look, this is how you're supposed to feel. So I went to the doctor and I got prescribed um, some antidepressants and took those for several months as well. And it just kind of made me not feel like the highs or the lows. You just kind of, it was even keel. You just, it, I didn't really like that. I didn't, I didn't like that I didn't get sad anymore like deep, deep sadness. But I also didn't get those really highs, so I stopped taking that. And meanwhile, for about a year, I'm still taking, after the endocarditis, I'm still taking an oral antibiotic twice a day. And I got blood, per, blood pressure medication I'm taking. And I just still feel worthless, so I stopped taking everything. I uh, stopped taking my blood pressure medication. I stopped taking my antibiotic, all without the doctors telling me to. I just had to stop. And it's about a year later now, and still haven't taken any of my blood pressure, any of my antibiotics, and I'm okay. But I still struggle with that self-hate, that self-doubt, that I'm not good enough feeling all the time. And, uh, you know, I just had to get those words out because it drives me crazy inside my own head. You know, I, it wasn't, I think about a year ago now, you know, I, I was really contemplating killing myself. I thought about it all the time, all the time. I don't think about it as much anymore, but I just wanted to escape. I wanted to get away from my brain. Because I couldn't stand living every day thinking my thoughts or feeling the way I felt. And some people may never understand that, you know. Just never, never understand even the thought of wanting to kill yourself. But some of us think about it every day. And uh, we're still here, you know. And I wish people could see that sometimes and give you credit. You know, we're still here. Even though a lot of times we don't want to be, we're still fucking here.